We have just received word here, not fully confirmed yet, that Guam is in trouble. First, the Commercial Pacific Company in Manila found its cable dead. Then word came through that bombers were sighted overhead in Guam at 6.45 a.m. Nothing further has come through in this direction. The next bad news came from Shanghai, which is a practically defenseless city now, with the United States Marines gone and the local defense forces stripped down to a very small amount. The Japanese apparently attacked Shanghai at night, shelling and machine gunning the Bund and occupying the main waterfront. They are reported to have sunk a British gunboat and taken over the American gunboat Wake, which was in a partially de decommissioned condition, acting as a communications contact for the American consulate in Shanghai. There should be little trouble in taking over the international settlement if the Japanese had not already done so. They probably have. That means that two or three thousand Americans are stranded there, unable to get out. The latest news of what was happening in Shanghai, not in much detail, came to us through a German radio report from Shanghai itself. When word first came to Manila that Honolulu had been attacked and bombed, the world thought it was Manila that had suffered. That was apparently due to an erroneous report. One came through later here from London to the effect that Manila had been bombed. So far, it is not true. But things have been moving very fast since word came about the Honolulu bombing. General Douglas MacArthur head of the United States Armed Forces in the Far East, was officially informed of the surprise attack on Hawaii in the middle of the night. Well before dawn, the Air Force had planes in the sky. The Armed Forces of the Far East are on alert and in a welter of action. They are rolling into position at strategic spots. Beaches where landings might be affected are reinforced according to plans laid long ago. General McCarthy's first concern was for panic. He issued a calming statement telling the Filipino populace not to lose their heads and turn into the country, blocking roads and highways which the military needs urgently for its own use. General McCarthy Commanded the, commanded the populace for its poise and self-control during the last few weeks of uncertainty and anxiety here. And in a statement, he said, quote, nothing can help our military effort more than a continuation of this calmness and self-restraint. Each individual should continue with fortitude, his usual routine, and be prepared to carry out with promptitude such directions as the authorities may order. These orders will be for the security and well-being of the people. The military is on the alert, and every possible defense measure is being undertaken. My message is one of serenity and confidence. End quote. Then General MacArthur made another move. With the consent of President Kazan, the Civilian Emergency Administration, which is the Filipino-operated agency for protection of the civilian populace has now been made responsible to the headquarters of General MacArthur. CEO officials are now reporting in and measures for the civilian defense will be issued very shortly, General MacArthur said. Most of the city of Manila has not realized yet the portrait of the news that we are at war. The news broke here too late for the regular editions of the papers. People got up and went about their business as usual. The news finally percolated to the community and floods of telephone calls came into newspaper offices and government offices wondering if it was true that the United States was at war with Japan.
I have just passed a whole schoolyard of children doing their morning exercises. The town looks fairly normal. Planes are overhead. A large group of them just went by at this moment, headed north from Nichols Field. They are American planes guarding against attack. The Navy is likewise on its toes. Admiral Charles Hurt, Commander-in-Chief of the Asiatic Fleet, gave out word that hostilities had opened with an attack on Pearl Harbor in Honolulu. Steps are being taken accordingly, was his laconic comment on that state of affairs. The Pan-American Airways Clipper Route runs directly across the zone of hostilities. The airline starts at San Francisco... Goes to Honolulu, Midway, Wake, Guam, and the Philippines. Then on to China or Singapore. Uh, the manager of Pan American Airways Manila office says they have a westbound clipper at Wake Island, but none others in the trouble zones, and none at Honolulu. There has been no time to check on what is happening at the clipper bases on Wake and Midway. A reliable source in Manila reports that the Japanese have an air base about 1,000 miles south of Wake in the South Pacific. It would be a long trip to bomb Hawaii from there, but if they send over big bombers, it could have happened. Manila, of course, wonders when its turn is coming. They noted the phraseology of the Tokyo announcement about a state of war in the Western Pacific. This is more properly the Western Pacific... That is the region around Hawaii. Let me repeat, there have been no bombings in Manila. Yet. We don't know what to expect. Japan has pulled a surprise move in Honolulu. But the Philippines is also at war. Planes from the Air Command are scouting continuously over the coastlines and over central Luzon to intercept any passive attack from any direction that Japan might... Undertake. We have just received word, not fully confirmed, that Guam is in trouble. The cable company here found its line cut, and then word came along that bombers were sighted overhead at 6.45 a.m. Nothing further has come through. The next word came from Shanghai, which is practically defenseless now with the Marines gone. The United States Marines landed in Manila last week. The Japanese attacked the place apparently at night, selling and machine gunning the famous Bund, Shanghai's waterfront. They are afraid to have sunk a British gunboat and taken over the American gunboat Wake, which was the only armed United States vessel in the vicinity. This boat was in a partially decommissioned condition, acting as a communications contact for the American consulate in Shanghai. Uh, this is Ford Wilkins in Manila, returning you now to CBS in New York. <laughs> 